Hey everyone, welcome again to Grace's VBS for t Summer 2020. We hope that you've been enjoying this week. Even though it's a different kind of VBS this year, we hope that it's been a blessing to you and your family. Today, for this Bible lesson, we're in our final day. This is day four's Bible lesson, and it comes from Psalm 23, verse 6. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, as I understand this verse, there's both a commitment and a promise. The promise is what we'll start with, and that is that when Jesus died on the cross, when he died on the cross for you and for me, it's final. He said, it is finished. No one can take that sacrifice away. No one can take that gift away. You are Jesus's. You are his child, you are a part of his flock, one of his sheep, you are part of his family. <laughs> it's exciting. No one can ever take that away. The devil may try and trick you, but Jesus has done it. He died on the cross, and it is complete. That's his promise. You have a place in heaven, no matter what. But then there's a commitment to this, too. It's a commitment by us, part of his family, Jesus' followers, that we are going to try and follow him every single day of our life. We have a promised place in heaven because of the cross and because of Jesus, but while we're here on earth, we have a commitment to be a part of his family and to live in his kingdom, following him and doing what he's taught us to do and trying to bring others to become a part of his flock, his family as well. The Good Shepherd, Jesus, wants us to get as many people to be his followers, his sheep, as we can. Being one of Jesus' people, one of his sheep, part of his flock and family, means not just coming to church every Sunday. It means living out our faith every single day. Living the way he taught us to following him and trusting in him, just like a sheep, that's right, trusts their shepherd. We trust our good shepherd, and we tell others about him. I hope you'll do that. I hope even after VBS is over, you'll enjoy the things we've taught you, and maybe you'll take up a new hobby, but every day you'll live your life for Jesus, and you'll share about your good shepherd with others. Will you pray with me? 
Dear Jesus, thank you for being our good shepherd. Thank you for dying on the cross for us and for making a place in your family, your flock, and in heaven. Help us to live for you every day, to follow you every day, and to share you with others every single day. We love you. Amen. All right. Sheep friend, should we let them go to their, uh, their session for today? Okay. Enjoy this session, guys, and have a great summer. Welcome to Vocation Bible School. And during this Vocation Bible School, we are learning that Jesus is our Good Shepherd. Today's session, I am going to teach you how to make Kool-Aid Play-Doh. I've got a lot of my ingredients right here, but before I show you what the ingredients are, we need hot water to make the Play-Doh. So over here on the stove, I've got my teapot already warming up. So I'm gonna turn that on one more time so it can get really, really hot. And this is something that the parents need to do, not the children, please. And if you don't have a teapot like mine, you can put water in a pan, a saucepan like this, put water in there and set that on the stove to heat up because it does work much better if you have hot water. So I'm gonna go through the ingredients. You don't need to run and get them now because we will post all of these ingredients at the end of the session and then you can make it on your own. So to make our Play-Doh, you will need flour, and you're gonna need, need a cup of it. You will also need salt. We will need a quarter of a cup of salt. You will need some vegetable oil, and for that you'll need a tablespoon. You will also need Play-Doh, I mean, uh, not Play-Doh, Kool-Aid to make the Play-Doh, sorry. We want the kind without the sugar in it. You need the little packets, and the reason we use Kool-Aid is because not only do you get your color this way, but it also gives you a nice smell. So you've got like fruity Play-Doh. I am going to use black cherry because it will help you as you make it. You can see it work better. So I think those are all the ingredients we need right now. And I also have a big fork or a big spoon to stir. I like to use the fork. I've got a bowl. And I've got some gloves because when I'm gonna mix it, it's gonna be very hot. And you might let yours cool down a little bit. And I don't know if you can hear it, but my teapot is already whistling. It's boiling, so I need to start. So let me turn that off so I don't burn myself. And I'm going to start putting all the ingredients together. So I'm gonna start with my flour. I'm gonna put one cup of flour in my bowl. Measure it out real nice, pretty flat, so I'll dump that in, and then I can set this aside. Then I'm going to need one quarter cup of salt. 
I'm just using my salt shaker. Um, but if you have a big thing of salt at your house, you may use that, a quarter of a cup. And I'll flatten that out a little bit. Use my fork to spread that out to make sure I got a quarter cup. Then I will dump that in there. Then I'm going to take my Kool-Aid packet, shake it down. These are all the dry ingredients. I like to put all the dry ingredients in together first before I put my oil and my water. So then you take your Kool-Aid packet and you dump it in. And then you can kind of see the color of the Kool-Aid in there. It's a dark red. Now, since my water is already hot, I'm going to take my vegetable oil, pour my one tablespoon, and I'll dump it in there. I don't know if you can see what it looks like. It's kind of all gooey in there. We will set this aside. And now I'm going to take my cup again, because I need one cup of water, just like I needed one cup of flour. So I'm going to walk over here to, my, to the stove, get my teapot. And this is very hot. So you're going to want to let the moms and dads help you. This is not something children should do on their own. So I'm going to pour my hot water. I don't know if you can see the steam. I'm going to pour the hot water into the one cup. And I'm going to set this over here so I don't hurt myself. And I'm going to start pouring it in. I'm not going to pour all of it right away because I don't want the Play-Doh to get too mushy. So then I take my big fork and I start stirring. And because you see the Kool-Aid is in there, you can see the dough turning red already. So I keep mixing, keep mixing, keep mixing. I think I'm going to pour a little bit more water in there. And if the dough starts to get too sticky, you can always add more flour. So I'm going to keep mixing, mixing, mixing. And it might be a little bit too doughy. I think I added too much water. So I'm going to just take a little bit of my flour, put it in there, mix it some more. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. It's getting kind of sticky. So now what I like to do to make sure everything's mixed in, I'm going to put my gloves on because it is very warm because I used hot, hot water. So I'm going to put my gloves on. I'm going to move all my utensils out of the way so I can use my mat. And I'm going to take the dough out of the bowl, scrape it off, put it onto the mat here. Oh, it kind of matches. And then I'm going to do something that's called kneading. You kind of squish it all together. And it sees if it's too sticky, you can add some more flour. I'm going to take the rest of the stuff out of the bowl here. Maybe I'll have to use my spoon to scrape some of that off of there. There we go. Then we can get all of our stuff onto our dough. Start mixing. And as you're mixing it, if it still can, seems kind of sticky, you can take a little bit more flour, sprinkle it on there, kind of like when you're making cookies or pie dough, pie crust. And you just kind of mix it all in on your mat. And yes, you do get flour on the on the counter sometimes, but that's okay. Then we do our cleanup later. So I'm going to keep mixing it, mixing it, mixing it. And that's why you like to use gloves too, because it kind of sticks to your fingers. And if it's hot, it could burn. And since it is warm, you probably can't play with it right away. You might need to let it set a little bit. So a lot of times what I do, and I forgot to bring one here, once my dough is like this and it's all mixed in oh and it smells so good too too bad you can't smell it you mix it all in and once the dough you can see it is like, like play-doh and but it's very hot so what i will do is i will put it in a ziploc bag let me see if i have one here let me see not in that drawer nope not one right here i will put it in a ziploc bag to let it cool then you can take it out maybe in an hour or two and play with it and i will show you how that works so right now i'm going to say goodbye and i'm going to put this in a ziploc bag and we'll come back later and i'll show you how you can play with your play-doh hope you enjoyed this
part of Plato that I have found is not the making of it, but the playing of it. Playing with it, I should say. So, as you can see, a lot of my, the things that I used earlier, the bowl, the spoons, the, uh, the flour, the salt, I put all that away. And hopefully you've helped your mom and dad put those things away too. So now I have some other things here. I've got a dowel that I'm going to use for my Play-Doh to be like a rolling pin to roll out the Play-Doh. On a couple different cookie cutters that we can play with. And I've got a mat here so we don't get, if the Play-Doh is sticky, it doesn't get all over your table or your, um, your table or your counter. But if you don't have one of these mats, it's okay. So I did find a Ziploc bag, put the Play-Doh in it, and as you look at it, it's still a little bit warm and you can see water. That's okay if there's water because when the Play-Doh cooled down, the water comes out of the Play-Doh. So now I'm going to take it out of the bag and I'm going to see what it's like. It might feel a little bit wet and a little bit warm, so you just need to kind of play with it a little bit. And as you look at it, you might see a little bit of white flour in it that didn't all dissolve when you were making it earlier, but that's okay. The more you play with your Play-Doh, the more the uh, Play-Doh will smooth out and those little pieces of flour will go away. So I'm just gonna squish it around. It's nice and soft. It's not oozing off my hand. It kind of stands there. I'm gonna roll it around a little bit. So if you do have one of these dowels, one of the things you can do is just roll your Play-Doh like this. Make it into a pancake like that. Sometimes it's easier on the counter. Oh, a lot of flour, but that's okay. And then you roll and roll and roll. And then you can either take a cookie cutter, push it down in there, peel it away, and then you've got an egg. You can decorate that, or you can take a pencil or something, draw in there, a spoon, fork, you can make pictures on it. One thing nice about Play-Doh is if you don't like what you made, you can always squish it back together. Now, if you don't have any cookie cutters, you can just make different things with it yourself. One of my favorite things to make with Play-Doh is a worm. Very simple. Or, like you can make a ball too. Watch. You take part of the Play-Doh, roll it in your hands like this, squish it around, and you've got a ball. If you want to turn that into a worm, one of the easiest things to do is kind of squish it a little more in your hand. Make it look kind of like a hot dog. And you start rolling it on your mat or on your counter or on your table until it gets very skinny. Okay. And you can make a snake, a worm, or if you want to do something else with that, you can turn it into a snail. Take one end and just start rolling. And there you've got a Play-Doh snail. And when you're done playing with your snail, you just squish it. That's the fun about Play-Doh. Kind of gets your stress out. It's fun. And this Play-Doh, since it's made with Kool-Aid, smells very good. And you might wonder, what does having making Play-Doh have to do with Jesus? Well, in our lessons today, we're talking about how Jesus is our good shepherd. God is our good shepherd. Do you guys know anything about shepherds and sheep? Well, a shepherd takes care of his sheep. Just like if you have a pet at home, like a cat or dog, you really get to know your cat or dog the more they live with you and the more you play with them. Well, that's how God is with us. The more he takes care of us, the more he gets to know us. Okay? And the more you play with your Play-Doh, the more you realize what it can and can't do. Shepherds really know their sheep a lot. And God, since he created us, knows us a lot too. He loves us very much. He's really sad when we, do say, uh, when we do bad things, when we don't listen to our moms and dads, or when we break something at home, or when we yell at our brothers and sisters. It makes them very sad. But you know what? God loves us very much. Just like a shepherd loves his sheep very much and takes care of them no matter what they do, God loves us very much. So as you play with your Play-Doh and you look at it closely, sometimes you can see your fingerprints in it. And you know, the more we talk to God, and the more we learn about God by reading the Bible, we can see God's fingerprints all over us too. We can. It just shows us that God loves us very, very much. So I'm gonna show you one more thing with my Play-Doh. I'm gonna roll it out into a pancake one more time. And I've got a very special 
cookie cutter right here. Hopefully it'll work for you. I don't know if I can get it thin enough to do it, but I will try. So I've got one cookie cutter here that's shaped like a heart. So I'm going to press it down into my Play-Doh. Don't know if you're going to be able to see it or not. I may have to bring your Play-Doh, my Play-Doh up close to the... It worked. So what I'm going to do is this. I don't know if I can bring it closer to let you know. God loves you, and you are very special to him. Thanks for playing. Hi friends, I hope you had a great week of learning with everyone that volunteered from Grace Lutheran and made this happen. I'm sure you learned a lot and you had fun along the way. So I am back to say goodbye to you and close this out. Today, you were focusing on a message about God's promise and his commitment and about how important it is for you to make that commitment in your heart to follow Jesus. So I'm going to show you a fun little video clip, and then I'm going to talk some more and say goodbye. So I'm just going to pull that up. Now, I didn't share the whole thing. We're just going to watch a part of it because I thought this part was the most important for you to hear. Okay? Is sometimes I feel like I don't know what God's plan is for me. Sometimes I feel like I'm not good enough for God. You know what I mean? Not like, not like I sin too much because I know that, that God forgives my sin, but like, you know, I'm just Douglas. What can I do? But you know what? It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you can walk or talk. It doesn't matter if you are the fastest person on the baseball team or if you're the smartest kid in your class. God can use you no matter who you are. If you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, it does not matter what you are physically able to do. God can still use you. You have a purpose. And so my challenge to you guys today is that you would not underestimate yourselves and definitely, definitely don't underestimate what God can do through you. God loves you very much and he has a purpose for you in your life. And no matter who you are, you can make the world a better place in the name of Jesus Christ. Hey guys, I hope you liked this video. Okay. I just felt like that was such an important thing for you to think about and hear. So after this week of all the fun, I hope that you'll always remember that while you might be small, you are mighty. God has a plan for you, and there is a purpose for you in your life. Remember to always thank God for the gift of life each day. Pray when you need help and ask for guidance when you need it. When you don't know what to do, ask God to help you. Always be kind to others and know that Jesus loves you and he's always with you. And there are lots of people who are willing to help you and support you along the way. So I'm gonna close with a short little prayer and say, dear God, thank you for the chance to share your important message with all the people that have been listening this week. Thank you for opening their hearts Help them to remember they do have a purpose. God's will is right there with them and can direct them and lead them and guide them if they ask for help. Be with them each day and help them to know that they have the joy of Jesus in their heart. Amen. I hope you had a great week and maybe you'll come visit us sometime at Grace. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.